Hey guys, and welcome to Amazing Videos, and today I'm going to be reading Chapter 21 of Schooled by Gordon Corp. Chapter 21. Name, Daryl Pennyfield. The Rhinecliff game always cranked school spirit up to fever pitch, and the pep rally proved it. When that guy in the Rhinecliff jersey stepped onto the turf, the whole place went nuts. Sure, we understood that it wasn't a real Rhinecliff Raider who had wandered into our stadium, but every single player knew exactly what was supposed to come next. By the time Zach yelled, get him, most of us were already up to full speed. I wasn't the fastest guy on the Condors, but I was the best tackler, and I was determined to get there first. I let the roar of the crowd fill me like rocket fuel, powering me past my teammates. I swear, it never once crossed my mind to wonder who this kid was, this hero who was ready to be plowed down by the entire squad just to put on a good show. Whoever it was, it had to be a good athlete who could take a big hit. The instant I made contact, I realized I was dead wrong. It was like tackling a punter. No, a punter's little sister. It was the worst feeling I ever had. I tried to roll off, screaming at the others, STOP! Too late. They were already airborne, coming in like a wave of guided missiles. I can't even describe the crunch. It wasn't pleasant for me either, because I was at the bottom. I could only manage how must it must have been for a skinny non-athlete who had no business setting foot on the Rigian. Ritteron. A bomb blast, an earthquake. The crowd was in a frenzy, howling every time another condor piled on. Suddenly, the coaches were there, reaching into the tangle of arms and legs, pulling off bodies and tossing them aside. I heard Coach Pulaski bellowing, What's the matter with you people? What was that all about? I jumped up and stared at him. Wait a minute, that wasn't planned? The coach didn't answer. He was too busy getting the helmet off the guy in the Rancliffe jersey. About 30 pounds of hair spilled out onto the turf. 1,100 screaming, cheering kids went suddenly silent at the sight of the 8th grade precedent, stretched out, dazed, on the grass. I dropped to my knees beside him. Cap, are you okay? Cap reached up and brushed at a clump of mud that had penetrated his face guard. He started to say something, but it came out as a low gurgle. The coach and one of the trainers hauled Cap to his feet. Supporting him, one on each side, they began walking him back to school, the, to the school building and the nurse's office. There was a smattering of applause like they give injured players at sporting events, but not much. Everybody was too shocked. Before leaving the field, Coach Pulaski turned back to the team. Nobody moves. Not a muscle. You hear me? They hustled Cap away. He was taking the occasional step, but if they hadn't been holding him up, he would have been flat on his face for sure. Still silent, the crowd began to file out in an orderly fashion. They fell in line behind Cap and the other coaches, like mourners in a funeral procession. There was none of the rowdiness and high spirits from before. Cap's injury had sucked all the pep out of this rally. I looked at my teammates, moving from face to face, not sure if I was upset or just confused. What happened? Why was Cap in that uniform? I guess he volunteered, offered our kicker. Volunteered for what? That wasn't supposed to be part of the rally. The coaches knew nothing about it. Maybe Cap did the whole thing on his own, suggested Zach. He's a bit of a nut job. Even you have to admit he's not Joe Average. That should have been enough for me. It always had been before, the word of Zach Powers. He was the guy who convinced me I wasn't as stupid as I think I probably am. Before Zach, school was pure torture for me. Imagine spending 180 days a year in a place that's designed to take everything you're not good at and make it important. Zach rewrote those rules for me. School had nothing to do with learning and knowing and getting the right answers. School was about sports and girls and fun and being popular because you're good at sports. Hang out with the right girls and have a lot of fun. But Zach had gotten so weird lately on the subject of Cap. How could I trust what he was saying? There was something about this disaster that didn't just add up. I was still chewing on it when Co Coach Pulaski burst back on upon us. His face was a thundercloud. If there's one thing I try to teach you besides the fundamentals of football, it's to use your head for something more than a place to put your helmet. What in God's name were you thinking? Honest coach, protested one of the receivers. We didn't know it was Cap. Pulaski's eyes bulged but you knew it was somebody. Why would you think it's ever okay for 20 guys to pile on some poor kid like he's a tackling dummy? 
and not just for his sake. What about your own? You risked your bones, your knees, any chance of playing in high school? And for what? To beat up on a jersey that once belonged to Rhinecliff? Is Cap going to be okay? I asked in a small voice. Probably, no thanks to you. For crying out loud, Pennyfield, I haven't seen you run that hard all season. Now I've got to ask you, all of you, who put that boy up to playing kamikaze? I studied my cleats, and everybody else studied theirs. Come on, pro prodded the coach. Somebody had to know about this. Again, dead silent. Fine, don't tell me. But this isn't over. When Mr. Kasigi gets back, he's going to ask you these same questions and probably a lot more. I'm disgusted with every last one of you. We changed and went back to class, but there was no escaping the events of the pep rally. The whole school had been there to see what happened, and no one would could talk about anything else. What went wrong? What did the team know? And when did they know it? Was Cap going to be all right? The speculation got wilder every minute. One rumor actually had it that Cap might take revenge on the team by running us over with the school bus. Come on, I exploded. There's no revenge. It was an accident. Naomi was beyond furious. Oh, sure. Twenty guys accidentally jumped on him. Okay, that part was on purpose, I admitted, but we didn't mean for it to be Cap. We didn't mean for it to be anybody. It was a stunt, like the guy in the jersey was Rhinecliff. Some stunt, she snapped. Cap was has never played football. You could have put him in the hospital. Calm down, so soothed Lena. He isn't in any hospital. The word is he's still at school and he's going to his afternoon classes, limping a little but not really hurt. When Lena used the phrase, the word is, you could take it to the bank. She knew everybody. It was like she had her own private network of spies. I heaved a sigh of relief. I'd been the first to hit Cap, after all. The shame brought t sudden tears to my eyes. Lena stuck her finger in my face. Don't you dare start blubbering on me. None of this was your fault. It was Winkleman. I was blown away. Hugh Winkleman? Phil saw him in the office, getting bawled out for it. None of us were Winkleman fans, but I couldn't believe Hugh would do anything to hurt Cap. Cap was the closest thing he had to a friend. Not to mention that the Wuss had didn't have the guts to hurt a fly. Not unless someone else was pulling his strings. I had a haunting vision from lunch yesterday. Hugh at a corner table, deep in conversation with Zack. Those two were worst enemies, yet they had been able they had been hunched over that table almost like they were plotting something? Zack was the captain of the Condors. He knew about the pep rally. He knew the locker room setup and the longtime rivalry with Rhinecliff. And he had a grudge against Cap that was growing bigger every minute. I guess I must have looked like the Incredible Hulk, sickly green and bursting out of my shirt in sheer rage. My own best friend, the guy I admired so much that I tried to be just like him. Daryl, what's wrong? Lena asked in alarm. Without answering, I raced down the hall towards Zack lock lo Locker, each stride longer than the last. How many times had I gone there to be his sidekick and his yes man to tell him what he wanted to hear? Well, he wasn't going to want to hear this. It was class chain, so the corridor was crowded. I kept on moving. There was no point being a linebacker if you couldn't clear a path with your shoulder. If I doubted Zach's guilt, the expression on his face when he saw me gave it all away. He knew I knew. You, I accused. You did that to Cap. You couldn't fight your own battles. You had to use the whole football team as a weapon. He played dumb. What are you babbling about? I didn't do anything to Cap. It was Winkleman, haven't you heard? It's all over the school. And and who put it, put him up to it? I know it's you. I saw you two planning it in the cafeteria. You're delusional. It was classic Zack, the sneering superior put down tone that he used on other people, but never on me. You're just feeling guilty because you're the one who hit him. We all hit him, I said hotly. But who got there first? You practically broke your neck doing it. No way were you going to be denied the pleasure of planting your helmet right between those numbers. The fact that he was 100% right made me that much matter. I was so pumped with rage that I didn't notice Cap himself joining the spectators around us. Zack wasn't done yet. To be honest, I'm kind of impressed, Daryl. I never knew you could get that kind of speed out of that fat caboose of yours. 
and I snapped, totally. Zack was smarter than I was, and I was never going to win this argument using just my mouth. It was time for my knuckles to take over. Honest, I didn't even know Cap was there. I didn't recognize the voice that said, violence is not the answer. All I felt was that my fist slamming into something about 18 inches closer than it intended receiver. When the burning haze cleared from my eyes, the first person I saw was Zack, untouched and laughing at me. Down at my feet lay Cap, out cold, his nose gushing blood like a geyser. Not again, no, I whimpered, horror struck. The hall, hall just about exploded with agitated chatter. The news spread like wildfire that the 8th grade precedent was down again. Zack was practically hysterical. That's the second time today you've decked this kid. You're building a great relationship. If you get any closer, you'll probably kill him. The reality of what I what I'd done overpowered even the desire to shut Zack's big mouth. I hauled Cap off the floor. Help me, I bawled at the crowd. A couple of sixth graders rushed up to support Cap on the other side. We hustled him through the maze of gawkers. I noticed he was starting to come around because he was mumbling about peace and nonviolence. His breath, his breathing blew pink bubbles in the torrent of blood that was still pouring from his nose. I was so flustered that it never even occurred to me to lie when Nurse Meyerson asked what happened. You were in a fight, she demanded. Not with Cap, I was trying to punch someone else, but his face got in the way. It was all because of nonviolence. I can see that, she said coldly, but her attention was on Cap, so I got sent to wait for her in the principal's office. I sat there through the final period of the day, not even agonizing over I'll deal with you later might mean. Whatever happened to me, I definitely had it coming. The rest of the school seemed to think so too, because I had, I got a lot of dirty looks as I stood there in full view behind the glass. The condemned man on public display, the guy who had KO'd Cap and tackled him before that. The worst part was that I liked Cap now. Sure, I'd been awful to him, but that had just been back in the days when we'd made him president as a joke and sent him wandering after fake press conferences and stolen his shoes while he was meditating. Back when Zack had been calling the shots, what a bunch of jerks we'd been, firing spitballs at a kid just because his hippie hair made a big target. And in spite of everything we threw at him, Cap never fell apart, or ratted us out, or even got mad. For weeks it had been open season on the 8th grade precedent, but he hung in there. That's what first brought me around to admire the guy. I didn't care that he could drive a bus or plan a dance. Cap Anderson was quality. I didn't see that before. I saw it now. Yet now was when I had really hurt him. I was never going to forgive myself. The bell rang, but Nurse Meyerson still hadn't appeared. The halls filled with students packing up for the day. Through the main doors, I could see the fleet of yellow buses coming up the circular drive. And there, between the third and fourth, an ambulance. No, it couldn't be. Not for Cap. There was no siren. It was driving normal speed, taking its turn in the queue. Still, what would an ambulance be doing in a line of school buses? The answer rounded the corner ten feet in front of me. It was Nurse Meyerson escorting a shaky, bloody, blood-splattered Cap towards the front door. The crowd parted to let them through. Outside, kids waiting to board their buses formed an aisle that led to the rear of the EMS unit. I didn't care how much trouble I was in. I raced out of the office and blasted through the double doors. The scene was eerie. All eyes were in cap, but no one was saying a word. Not a peep. Not even a whisper. The only sounds were the idling engines and the flapping of the flag on the pole. I cupped my hands to my mouth. Cap, I'm sorry. It was an accident. Both times. I was too late. Thurst Meyerson helped him into the ambulance, and the greatest eighth grade, eighth grade precedent we ever had was gone. That's chapter 21, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and see you next time on amazing videos. Aren't you excited for chapter 22? I'm really excited.